So this is a wild prickly pear growing around Namibia, considered by many to be invasive, and it's considered to be invasive because of these thorns. Now there's a couple of interesting things that I want to show you. Um, I struggled to get Lucina to grow on the farm because everything eats it. Now this is closer to the house, so that might also have an effect. But you can see here, the Lucina grew wonderfully between the prickly pear. That's the first observation. The second observation is about four weeks ago, we harvested about, I don't know, hundreds of leaves from these trees and I pushed out new growth. And as you can see here, the new growth doesn't have any thorns. So that tells me that it might be edible now by the pigs. So that's what we're going to test this morning is to see if the pigs enjoy the leaves that is still green and that is without thorns. So let me just show you quickly how we cut a couple of them. So Mika is going to be my camera woman. So ideally you want to just grab a, a, a barbecue tongs and then just start slicing. Now um, you can, because they don't have thorns, you can probably use your hands but I don't want to take the risk. You can, I'll tell, show you now how quickly we'll be able to fill up a bucket. So, now you must remember we are only taking the new growth. So this might also be a way to control the invasive species. If you have just enough to fill up the buckets that you need every day to feed your pigs or your sheep or anything like that. Uh, so we are only using anything that doesn't have thorns. Now you must also remember that this is the growth that this one little tree gave us in, I think, just just over a month. I'm not 100% sure, but I made a video where I planted these things in a hedge. Um, because of the long thorns, the animals don't enjoy them that much. And... Uh, you are able to plant them as a hedge um, for security purposes as well. So this can be done, as you can see, very quickly. Pick that one up now, Bia. Thank you. Okay, Bia is helping us. You can have a look for me to see if it's zoomed out completely. Okay, so you can see how quickly that bucket is filling up. Um, I think I'll check on the video, but I think this is less than two minutes probably. Three minutes. Three minutes already. Yep. Okay, three minutes of working. Let's have a look. Um, Bia, no, just give me a moment. Let's quickly see how fast I can do this. Okay, so this is what we got from this one tree. Then we have a smaller tree over here. And there's also some new growth on it. This one we didn't cut back that much because it was still a bit smaller. Let's have a look. That's a lost one. Okay, I think let's go feed that to the pigs. Mika, just show the bucket the last time and then pause the video so we will stop the the pigs. Okay, so here we are at the baby pigs. I threw one in there just to check um, if they do eat it, but I'm going to put the rest or m some in just to see how they react. camera. So let's have a look. Now, you must remember that this is now the first time that they are introduced to this food. So they might be a little bit skeptical. They don't look skeptical to me. Me too. <laughs> they really do like it. And that one's actually eating a fruit that fell. Uh, okay, no, not anymore. It's doing it. It's doing it. Let's just have a look quickly. Okay, I think we should give the big pig some as well. Go, 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 go,
go, go, go. <laughs> it's very, it's very go, happy go, go, about go. it. Hey, side, piggy. Let's put it here. Yeah, give it to me. Let's see if he enjoys it. You look skeptical. Yeah, there is there's one leaf gone already. He's demolishing it. Yeah, he's. Yeah, I don't think he's that skeptical. I think if you chop it up so the juices comes out, they will enjoy it even more. I turn back. So with that being an invasive species, um, considered an invasive species in Namibia, I think there's real potential to make it a very productive plant, feeding it to, to pigs and mixing it into their food. Um, and they will, I'm sure they will demolish it. Goats and sheep will eat it. Um, I'm not so sure about horses, although I know the domesticated variety. I spoke to somebody that said he planted them in his horse camp and for the image it was great because they controlled the weeds and, you know, and the prickly pears were just there between the horses. And he said one day one horse tested the prickly pear leaves and came back seven days later and his whole field was demolished, the horses ate it all. Uh, heading out to Damien's forest quickly, I want to show you something special. My day consisted of me having some appointments, Simon was here, Lucas became sick, uh, Moremi went to go and take him. Lucas became sick yesterday, he didn't tell us, he simply just didn't do his work. Went home hoping that he would feel better, and then this morning he's let me know he's very sick. Um, Sent Moremi to go and look if he's okay. Moremi went there um, to his house, and then he said, Listen, this guy's really not okay. Took him to hospital. We sent him some money. Lucas got food and medicine and everything that he needs. Doctor said he should be on his legs by Monday, but we'll make sure that he rest enough um, before he comes back to work okay so Lucas was supposed to do this yesterday but Simon and I ended up doing this so we put some compost in there put some dried prickly leaves in there um, now this is the thornless variety thornless meaning there's only little hairy thorns on it it's not invasive our farmers unions are now fighting to get them unbanned you can almost say because they are a very useful plant the government's still frowning upon them but the farmers are ignoring them on large scale and planting them on large scale because it's a very useful crop it's the same cultivations that they are used in Mexico and so on so we ended up planting Lucina cover crop and prickly pears in one hole um, many 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 of them that's why all the bottles are lying here this is all cut out lucinas, bishi hives, bishi hives said that we should plant some and see how they do and he also sent me some documentation or a comment that says that they get root bound if you keep them in the bottles too long so we've planted lucina and I thank bishi bees, bishi bees I still can't pronounce the name, I need to write it down anyway what I wanted to tell you about it um, I did some maths while sitting here a couple of minutes ago I don't think it's going to be legible legible um, yeah. so I'm going to just re read it to you okay so um, this is what we get sorry just one second this is what we get in the rain and this is the value now we stay on a 65, uh, 6 5 hectare piece of land, that is 65,000 squares. Um, if we get an average rain of 400 milliliters per year, then that is 400 liters on every square. So a milliliter on a square is a liter that's fallen from the sky. So 40, 400 mils, that's 400 liters falling on each square that comes down to 26 million liters 
falling from the sky onto our land for 26 million liters that is a hell of a lot of money a hell of a lot of water um, and imagine how much that is in a wet climate 26 million divided by a thousand to get it into cubes cubic liters is 26 uh, thousand cubes 26 thousand cubes times 26 Namibian dollars is what we pay per cube more or less that is 776 thousand uh, Namibian dollars falling from the sky onto my land every year that is a little bit more than what I paid for this land um, I got it at a best bet, better price because I paid for it by labor as well but that's more or less what we paid for it now divide that by 18 to get it to into US dollars that's 37,555 US dollars falling from the sky onto this land over here 37,555 US dollars that is an incredible incredible amount um, Mika just brought me some coffee which brought, brings me to my next point um, thank you Mika um, okay I did not spend I got some coffees yesterday from folks and I really wanted to thank you I did not spend one cent of that today um, so I'm not gonna put your names down yet I'll spend it tomorrow and um, because these coffees are special they requested specific things so I'll see if I can do those specific things for you tomorrow and then I will post a video on that um, really thank you so much and have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow.